Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today is going to be an unusual one because we are not anywhere near our normal space. We are in fact at my kitchen counter. Um, because today we are going to talk about casting with resin. Um, I use a lot of different things on my bases. I like big bases and, you know, I can't lie. And so we're going to talk about how we do resin casting. Uh, so I've got some molds laid out here. It's a couple different brands. Um, these are from Her Starts. Um, this is from Woodland Scenics. Uh, you can use, a lot of people use, um, like dental, um, like dental cast stuff in here, uh, like dental clay type of stuff. I don't like it. It takes a long time to dry and I'm impatient. So if you're impatient like me and you want to get some stuff quicker, this is a great way to go about it. So instead of doing that, you can use this, which is smooth cast, smooth. Uh, specifically, this is Smoothcast 305. This is a two-part epoxy resin. Um, it creates the plastic. It's called liquid plastic on the box. Um, it creates it when you mix part A and part B. Um, so what you need to do this process is, first off, uh, you need the molds themselves. Second off, you need uh, a bunch of little plastic cups. Um, if they actually have lines on them, it's better, but mine didn't have lines on them, so such as life. Uh, you need four cups per mold you want to do. Or not mold, sorry, per sort of tray you want to pour, per mix. So you can see I've got two trays laid out here. You always want to have something underneath these, like these are um, cooking sheets with foil over top of it, because this process is super duper duper messy. This is extremely messy. You want to have stuff like this. Um, you also want to be wearing gloves, which is what you're going to see me handle right now. My other hand is free, but I'll have a glove on in a moment when we start. And uh, we have little stirring sticks and we have little scraper sticks. These are just little bamboo things that I ordered from, um, you know, in bulk from uh, Amazon. But effectively, and then we need a stopwatch, by the way. So there are two normal brands of Smoothcast. Um, Smoothcast 300 is what I had previously done a lot of work with. That cures in about three minutes, okay? Which is really fast, and you'll see what I mean when I say it's really fast when we get going. Um, the This 305 cures in about five minutes. It's a little longer, but it does make a difference. The, our, our general strategy here is going to be to take part A and part B, combine them into a third cup, we're going to pour them in together, mix for a certain number of seconds, pour into the last cup, mix. The reason we do that is so, because they want to separate naturally. So by doing two cups, we make sure we flip them, get them back together. Uh, and then we're going to take from the fourth cup and we're going to pour into our mold. My molds have just a little bit of, you can't probably can't see it in the light, very, very light dusting of powder on them, of like baby powder, um, just to make sure that... Uh, these things pop out, but generally resin doesn't stick to these materials. Um, one of the downsides to doing resin casts with this stuff is that it will degrade the mold over time. It is harsher on your molds than um, than the dental plaster. That's the word I couldn't think of earlier. Ha! Um, <laughs> but for someone like me, I, I do maybe two casts a year. I just kind of bulk do it out. Like I'm going to burn through both of these bottles sitting here tonight. Um, I'm going to cast everything I want and then I'll have my basing supplies for months to come. So for someone like me, it's really, there's no difference. I don't cast enough with these to make a difference to the resin and the resin ends up being much better on bases. It chips less, paint adheres better to it, um, all that sort of thing. So uh, that's the basic premise. We don't have any other kind of mold release agent because we don't really need it for this resin, um, other than a little sprinkle of baby powder. So uh, that's one of the nice advantages of this. Um, but what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna mix them together, I'm gonna do it right in front of you, pour them, scrape them, and we'll walk through the actual process. Um, first, I need to get a couple of the things in order, get all my pieces laid out. You'll notice that I left the open space at the bottom of the tray. This is intentional. So my molds are up near the top of the tray. 
this space is open. That will become readily apparent as to why very, very soon. Okay? So, we'll, we'll get to that in just a moment. I'm going to move some stuff around, and we'll come right back. All right, and we're back. So first thing I did is I moved my cups onto the foil. Anytime we're doing pouring, we're doing it over a surface like this. We also have both gloves on. This stuff is pretty darn toxic. It's not going to burn your skin or anything, but you don't want it on your skin in general. It's, it can be a real irritant. So I moved on to there. I've spread out my sticks, so everything is at the ready. I've got my stopwatch over here just out of camera on my phone. Okay, and uh, we're going to go ahead and do this. So here we go. I hit start, and then I'm going to take part A and part B, and we are going to pour them together into one cup. Okay, and then I'm going to put my cups back here. It's fine. And then I'm going to get our stirring stick, and I'm going to stir, 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 stir. And I'm going to stir for 20 seconds. You can see it start to change. 20 seconds. See it get clear. There we go. 20 seconds up. We now pour directly into the other one. Into our last cup. And goes that one. Stir for another 20 seconds. Timing is everything on this. This is reacting right now. There is a chemical reaction going on. Okay, time up. Stick on the side. Resin now poured. And what we're gonna do is just, you can see, I'm just trying to get it out there, get it down into all the holes down into all the little cracks of it. It's going to kind of go everywhere. That's fine. What you want to do is you don't want to try to choke up like I was doing there. You want to get a nice, smooth, even pour. Okay. All right. Now, in there, scrapey stick. Scrapey stick, we do is we come along the top and we scrape it off. We scrape off the excess. Okay. We don't want to leave a bunch of this sitting on top. So we're moving always in the same direction. Scrape, and we scrape, and we scrape. Now with the 305, I have enough time to comfortably do this without too much of a problem. You can spread it out. This also makes sure that it's nice and even amongst all of my items. Like everything gets leveled out. And I get down and kind of look. Yep. Okay. Nice and even. And I drop my scrapey stick and we're good. So now I'm going to pick up the camera. This is going to be disorienting for a moment. I apologize. We're going to move my tripod over here. I'm going to do the other one while we're waiting. Okay. So now we stop. Reset the clock. And we start. And we pour. Part A and B into the same thing. Cups together. Cups done. Stirry stick. Stir, 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 stir. We'll do this for 20 seconds. You can see how it's all foggy right now. And what you'll see happen is over the 20 seconds, you notice how it becomes clear? As I mix it around, get near those edges. Almost there. There we 
we go. 20 seconds. Side. Pour into the next one. Okay. So we're going to try to knock out any of these bubbles. As soon as we get some bubbles in there, those will lead to bubbles in the casting. I don't want that. In general, with this kind of resin pour, bubbles are going to be a thing. You're going to get some. That's why I use it for basing elements. That's our time. Oops. Stick to the side. And then we pour. Whoa, way too fast. Yeah, it's all right. Flatten that out later. All right, not my best pour ever. I might have missed some of those just a little bit and gotten out of control. That's okay. Say la vie, that's what happens. And then we scrape. By the way, you're, in case you haven't noticed, you're always gonna have a bunch of excess. Like it's just the nature of this beast. Pretty good. All right. So, other than our ridiculous overpour there at the beginning where I totally duffed that, that's all right. Uh, we're done. So, now what's going to happen is let me see if I can get the camera real close in here. And. See if we can actually watch this happen. Okay. So now we wait. So I'm just going to let it record here, and this will speed up as I accelerate this part of the video, and you can watch this actually form.
All right, so as you just saw on camera, everything hardened up. So now take it out of there. You probably noticed me at one point like check it by touching this stuff. So generally the thicker the piece in here, by the way, this is a good example of bad scraping. As you can see where I still have resin on here that I didn't scrape off. So this is what happens when you do it poorly. Um, this one is what it should look like, right? Where you don't see anything here except the middle pieces. But at any rate, we're good. Everything's solid. By the way, if you touch it, don't don't touch it until you're sure. So that's why I use this over pour to check. But now it's just a matter of literally, we just pop them out. And there we go. Got some rocks. They just pop right out of there. Ba-boom. So you kind of go through one at a time. Pop all your little pieces out. I use another plastic cup to collect them all in. But nice and easy. Pop right out. So if you want to see what we'll do on this one over here. All right? Generally the thinner the piece, you can see if you just kind of spread it apart, you'll see everything loosen up. But the thinner the actual piece, uh, the quicker it'll solidify. So there's a nice little crate all ready to go. A little stack of lumber. All this fun stuff. How about a treasure chest? Ta-da! Treasure chest. All right? So now comes the fun part where I just sit there and pull all these little things out one at a time. And uh, once I'm done with that, I'm going to line everything up and do it again. But there you go. That's it. Resin casting is really easy and fun. Um, it's You can buy all sorts of different molds. Um, nice little crystal there. I really like that one. You can get them from Her Starts molds, but people like Woodland Scenics make a whole bunch. If you go to your local like hobby and train store, you'll find a whole bunch of different molds that you can use for this. Um, I'm a fan of the smooth cast. By the way, I said five minutes initially. I'm sorry, I don't know why I said that. The 300 is five minutes. This one is like 15 to 20 to really harden, so that's why it's kind of nicer. I would recommend the 305 over the 300. With the 300, you have to be like really fast. I mean, when you saw me scraping, okay, like when I was um, like when I was scraping the top of this, um, it will literally start turning on you, you know, turning white like you saw in that sped up time video. It will start doing that as you're scraping. Like you have to stick to like 20 seconds, 20 seconds, pour, scrape, 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 done. So you have to be like really fast and efficient with Smoothcast 300. The 305 is much more forgiving. You can play around with it. So um, yes, as I said, it's actually about a 15 or 20 minute cast. So what I'm gonna do is pull all these things out of there. Then what I do is I just give it a good scrub with a toothbrush to get rid of this stuff. Uh, like all this little sort of extra resin here. Reset it all up and pour again. So I had one more thought as I was pulling this out. I recorded this after I recorded the ending, but I'll drop it in the middle. Sometimes you get pieces, like when you pour like this, first of all, it's better to use a cup that has a pouring spout on it. I should have said that at the beginning. I didn't happen to have any. We might do. Um, whenever you have these, you're gonna have pieces that don't quite finish. Like you see here how this didn't fill all the way. It's like, it's still a solid piece, but it has this sort of gap at the bottom where it didn't all the way fill. I still save these. These are still perfectly useful. I can trim that down and I can still use it. It's still a perfectly useful little set of pipes, right? Um, when some of them, when I get like malformed or misformed pieces, like here, here's a nice one where I've got this at the end because it didn't fill all the way, right? But it's still this little nice events. I can just shave it down and have it buried in some dirt. This becomes excellent like basing rubble. So don't waste anything. Sometimes you'll have some missed cast pieces. It's just gonna happen. Um, using a proper cup that pours better would be the right answer. I didn't do that, and now I pay the price for it, but that's okay, you probably want to. Um, but either way, it's still completely useful, because all this stuff becomes great elements for basing. Whether wrecked or ruined, it still can be useful. You know, it's nice to have like a perfectly formed little sci-fi crate like that. 
but if this thing had been miscast, I'd still keep it and then I'd just half bury it in some dirt like that on the ground and it's good to go, right? So there is no waste here. I mean, you can make use of everything. Um, this is one of my favorite ones they made. It has these little like plasma conduits and coils in it and crates and stuff. It's a cool sci-fi one for your sort of sci-fi bases. It has like fans and stuff for putting on the walls. It's great. Anyways, just a quick extra thought I had as I was finishing pulling these out and uh, thought I'd add it in there. So, there we go. Uh, hope you enjoy. And we'll, now we'll cut back to the ending. So, that's all there is to it. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. hope you get this to give you some ideas. This is where I get a lot of my basing stuff from. It's just so useful. Um, Her Starts makes some really awesome molds for this kind of thing. So I like to just get the ones that have like little things like this, like treasure chests and um, sandbags and, you know, box crates and things like that. And you're set for all your sort of basing decorations. You can manufacture a ton of these. Um, stuff like this one is also really useful. Like this one right here, if you want to do your, that one wasn't totally dry, that's okay. <laughs> if you want to do like bricks, right, you can get a whole section of bricks really fast and easy. Um, so, that's really nice. But there you go, that's all there is to it. If you liked that, give it a like. Uh, certainly appreciate that. Uh, subscribe for additional hobby cheating. We're here every week with more hobby cheating videos. Comment below if there's specific stuff you want to see me tackle or weird craft projects like this you want to see me do. Uh, but as always, I appreciate you watching and uh, we'll see you next time.